Welcome to another episode of Casual Citizen, an ongoing series about the upcoming first-person MMO Star Citizen by Cloud Imperium Games. I'm your host, Alyssiana, from the Mystic Worlds Gaming Blog. This week's episode is about one of my favorite ships, the Banu Merchantman. It's the only alien technology ship that I've pledged for, and I'm super excited to see how it turns out. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Begin transmission. Before we discuss the Merchantman, let's take a brief look at the species that birthed her, the Banu. Our first encounter with the Banu occurred in the Davian system, and 2438, an independent nav jumper named Vernon Tarr opened fire on what he thought was another privateer trying to steal his claim in the system. The pilot of the other ship turned out to be Banu. Luckily, the incident didn't lead to any deaths and became humanity's first introduction to the Banu Protectorate. Bacchus is believed to be the Banu's home world. We say believe because they haven't been very forthcoming on the subject. The Banu political system is a republic of planet states, each run under its own political system. The representatives of each planet gather for a quorum to debate legal and trade issues that affect the entire species. Otherwise, each planet is left to their own devices. The lack of a central government, formal or required communication between the planets, and loose historical record-keeping means that the Banu planets are rife with crime. Criminals can easily migrate from one Banu planet to the next when things get a little too hot. And since the UEE is forbidden from crossing borders to pursue wanted felons, Banu worlds are also a haven for human criminals and syndicates. The Banu do not maintain a standing army. Local militia keep the peace within their systems and they're not especially selective. Even criminals can and do serve. However, don't be fooled into thinking this makes them an easy target. On the contrary, they have the means to muster a formidable fighting force if necessary. They just prefer not to. It gets in the way of their coin. In comes the merchantmen. The Banu are the traders and culture hounds of the universe. There are a lot of things they're willing to overlook in pursuit of commerce. I mean, come on, they trade with the Vandul. And if you're looking for anything shady, check the back alleys of any Banu city. Their planets are varied and colorful, and they take pride in being unique in their culture and traditions. However, pursuit of wealth through trading is their one true ring. And why the ship designed to support that lifestyle, the merchantman, is prized above all others. Directly from CIG, what makes the merchantman cool? The Banu merchantman isn't just a ship, it's a home and a way of life. We know that a lot of backers want to become traders and merchants in the Star Citizen Persistent Universe. And we've created a ship that's more than just a sterile bulk freighter for you. The Merchantman is a traveling bazaar capable of landing or docking and inviting locals in to view what its cargo holds have to offer. The ship design, perfected by generations of Banu development, is intended to offer a combination of high speed and durability. While the ship is less configurable than a Caterpillar or a Starfarer, there's still plenty of room to take the ship in different directions. From black market trade platform to a deadly Q ship, it's a force to be reckoned with. End quote. For those who aren't familiar with the term Q ship, they were heavily armed merchant ships with concealed weaponry designed to lure submarines into making surface attacks. This gave Q ships the chance to open fire and sink them. The basic ethos of a Q ship was to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Again, directly from CIG, what inspired the Merchantman? The Banu Merchantman was initially inspired by 19th century sailing ships, Yankee traders and the alike that traveled from port to port hawking sometimes dubious wares. 
In turn, this heavily influenced the development and history of the Banu as a species. The quasi-organic aged look of the merchantmen suggests a more direct connection between the Banu and starfaring, as has the background that it has as being a particularly rare prize for merchants in general. In terms of gameplay, the Banu was inspired by games like Ultima Online, where the player can set up their own stall and sell goods that they have crafted or collected. End quote. That quote in particular from CIG really grabbed my attention. It reminded me of EverQuest 2's mechanics to support players selling directly from their homes. This allowed you to start up your own business and cut out the auction house as the middleman. I ran a successful furniture and interior design business using those mechanics. It got to the point though where I had to stop. Having to manage my time in real life and keep a journal of customers and dates of when I'd be free to work on players' homes in a game became a bridge too far. While my EQ2 experience being an in-game entrepreneur became overwhelming, it's still something that I enjoy doing and applaud games that support such pursuits. The BMM, the new merchantman, is characterized as a trade vessel within the cargo ship classification. As far as available cargo size units, it carries more than the whole sea, coming in at 5,018. It's 100 meters in length and supports a maximum of eight cruise stations. Compared to other cargo ships, the BMM on paper has more defensive and offensive technical capabilities wolf in sheep's clothing. However, remember that this is a concept ship and as such, things are still subject to change. Why is the Banu Merchantman a lifestyle? One of the things that sets the BMM apart from other cargo ships is that it's designed for sustainable deep space travel, a traveling business with residential accommodations. Instead of bunks stashed conveniently in a passageway or galley-like area, the BMM contains dedicated living quarters a short distance from the cockpit. It also boasts an observation room where business negotiations take place and allow customers to view a portion of the cargo hold. The BMM is designed for you to go to your customers and reside at that location for a time while conducting business. When you're done, you close up shop and move on. The BMM can't be an island. While the features and lifestyle of owning a BMM may instantly sound appealing, having one is only part of the equation. Unlike a pure cargo hauler, whose primary role is to transport goods not sell them, the BMM needs merchandise to sell. I doubt you'll be running NPC cargo hauling missions using the BMM. It doesn't sound like an efficient use of this vessel. Therefore, you need a consistent means of filling up your cargo bay. Pairing the BMM up with a resource acquisition ship, such as the Orion, Reclaimer, or Endeavor, could be an option. Like an airplane segregates seating into economy, business, and first class, you might consider the same strategy with the merchantmen. Commonly needed ore, food supplies, industrial materials, etc. could be your economy merchandise, while the more exotic, lower quantity, higher margin cargo, your first class, and then unique things you find throughout the universe, your business class. For your planning, you'll need to know which systems produce luxury items that are in demand elsewhere. For a head start in ideas, I suggest you start reading through the Galactic Guides, which will discuss economic needs and consumer demands in various regions. Then take a look at where those locations are in relationship to each other on the ARC star map. CIG has said that not all merchandise is available in every system. Therefore, savvy merchants will need to stay informed on pockets of consumer demand for merchandise versus where those items can be acquired. In that scenario, it doesn't have to be exotic or luxury to be profitable. I wonder if we'll be able to purchase wholesale quantities of goods from NPC-managed businesses. Nefarious Intentions 
Although pirating and unlawful conduct isn't my cup of tea, I recognize it as a valid play style, and the BMM can play a role in such activities. CIG has suggested that the capabilities of the BMM make it viable as an armed smuggling ship or a blockade runner. I wasn't a pirate in EVE Online, but I owned a blockade runner. I used it to transport salvage and low-level manufactured goods into hostile territories where listing them on the auction house was considerably more profitable. I also used it to transport my own ships and equipment to whatever system our organization was defending during faction warfare, a form of territorial PvP in EVE. Golden Age of the Solar Clipper The backstory and intent for the Banu Merchantmen reminds me of a beloved book series, The Golden Age of the Solar Clipper. The Clipper series by Nathan Lowell tells the story of a young man who finds himself an orphan just as he's about to enter the equivalent of college. He'd been living on a corporation-owned planet with his mother, who was employed by said corporation. After her sudden death, he's required to leave the planet. With few options available to him in such a short period of time, he signs on to a merchant ship. From there, he and the crew live the lifestyle that sounds very similar to the plans for the BMM. In addition to managing stores to sustain themselves and the ship, they travel the galaxy looking to buy low and sell higher. There aren't enough gaming hours of the day for me to experience all the things I'm excited about in Star Citizen. I am hopeful that some of the longtime Eve bloggers will give the game a try. I would love to read about their exploits in managing one of the non-combat profession ships. Commerce and industry are huge professions in EVE that often come with tales of intrigue, duplicity, and skullduggery. I'd love to see and read about those type of adventures playing out in Star Citizen. Show Notes as this week's show is about a ship, most of the links are to content published on robertspaceindustries.com. In addition to that, I'm including a link to a thread started by BMM owners on Redacted. Also, a link to Human Perspective, fiction published by CIG that affords a closer look at the Banu that can be enlightening. If nothing else, you'll learn to read the fine print on any contract you make with them. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving this episode a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated and doing so helps the show's visibility, making it easier for others to find their way here. As ever, be kind and fly safe. This is Alyssiana signing off until next time. End transmission.